Hi everyone, it's Michelle here. This is December the 8th. This is Flossmas Day 8. Welcome along. We have just about survived Storm Barra. Well, I say survived Storm Barra. We are in the midst of Storm Barra. It is blowing an absolute hoolie outside, so you might well be able to hear the wind. What, what it will be like in the morning when we wake up, I have no idea, but we are certainly getting battered by this storm. So, Fingers crossed, I'll let you know tomorrow if everything has survived. One thing that definitely hasn't survived is the arch in the garden. It was looking a bit sort of poorly before the storm, but it's <laughs> pretty much collapsed in the middle. So um, I'm gonna have to try and work out how I can unwind my beautiful jasmine um, from there and then, and then try and put up another arch, but we'll wait and see. It might be in somebody else's garden by tomorrow, we'll never know. Right. I have got finishes, a start, freebies, three previous finishes and my advents today. So I've got quite a lot to show you. I do have a couple of pieces of haul, but I think I've decided that I'm going to save those for the Sunday shows. Um, just so that more people get to see them because more people still tune in for the Sunday briefing. And I need that group level absolution um, for, yeah, just basically handing my entire bank account over to Etsy. So I think that's what I might ask for for Christmas, just Etsy vouchers, because that's all I seem to, uh, all I seem to spend these days. And then of course the fabric and the floss to to kit them up. I've got a real itchy eye today. Sorry about that. Not entirely pleasant. Right, I'm going to show you my finish first of all. Now, what I have finished, I have to excuse my little dog-eared label is because he's been backwards and forwards to school to me with me quite a lot is this little santa he's one of the charmed santa faces and this one is saint nicholas mhcs uh f16 if you're looking for the code this is the second one in the series that i've done i've done one of the other ones as well and so this is what he currently looks like so after everything being blown out yesterday, it is now kind of a little bit of a funny light. And we've got a bit of a, a twitch there going on. I don't know if you can see the lights flickering just a little bit. So you never know. So this is my Santa face. And actually, from a distance, the beading looks better. I wasn't sure about it close up. I couldn't see the pattern. But actually, now he's a bit further away. I could. So what I'll try and do is a little video on how I finish these, because lots of people have asked me. Somebody asked me about how I do the beading as well. Um, I have got another Santa that I'm working on at the moment, so I'll try and film a little clip. But um, the way I do the beading is to ignore what Mill Hill say. Because <laughs> Mill Hill, some of the beads are supposed to have a full cross through them, which puts them straight. And some of them are supposed to have just a top leg of your stitch through, which puts them on an angle. I do all mine on an angle. I just prefer the look of it with them all on the angle. So yeah, I just put all my beads in the right place, but secure them with just one, one top stitch. And then there's his little hat with the, the little charm in the middle there. You can't really see the gold beads. And I, all I've done is just trimmed along the bottom there, just so I can show you a little bit more easily how his little hat is going to finish up. And then the last thing I've done is I've just prepared using some of the leftover beads what I'm going to use as my beaded hanger. So I'll sew the beaded hanger onto the back before I finish it off and then it'll all be encased in the back and it'll all look lovely. So that's my finish. I need to put that somewhere where I'm not gonna lose it. So as I said, as soon as I can, I'll finish it and I'll try and do a little video or a series of photographs showing you what I do. My start. Now I said I wasn't gonna start anything because I'm a, a massive liar. <laughs> I had to start this, I had to start Evergreen. It's just so delightful. I just absolutely love it. And uh, I have started it on a piece of 32 count Tobias by Seraphim and that's my start so far and because I've got the threads to hand I have done a conversion to sulky 
So by conversion, what I mean is, I've looked through my sulky box and I've picked colours that I think are right. <laughs> there is on the sulky website an Excel file of a conversion from DMC to sulky or sulky to DMC, whichever way you want to go. Um, but there's not always quite the right colour. So sometimes you do have to make your own choices. So let me just show you what I've got. There is, uh, there is my red, my white and my green. Then I've got my flesh colour and my pink cheek highlight. Now it's choosing to blow out. And then I've got my two browns. I might have another look at that brown. I might see if I can find one that's a touch lighter, but the dark one is fine. So I'm stitching it on 32 count. And this is the first time I've actually stitched with Sulky on 32 count. I've always stitched with 30, 36 count before. And I absolutely love it. The coverage is lovely and it looks fantastic with one strand, um, which is obviously what you use with Sulky. So yeah, I can't wait to get a bit more into that one. So that's my start and my finish. My freebies today is something a little bit different. Um, I don't have anything to show you, so I'm gonna put pictures up uh, probably either side. And I found out about this freebie from Julie, who is Kansas City Girl in a Colorado world. And she has been actually stitching these freebies. So I'm gonna get the name correct. So on Instagram, and I know she's got a blog as well, which or a, a web address, which is where these charts can be found also. It's um, The Laurel Witch. The Laurel Witch. Now I know Julie has showed a couple of her charts before, but she is doing a small freebie advent. So every day she's releasing a small freebie. So go along and have a look. I'll have been putting some of them up for you to see. Go along and have a look. You might want them all. You might only want one or two of them. You might want to put the numbers on. You might not want to put the numbers on. So what a fantastic advent gift to us all. A whole set of freebies. And um, thanks very much to Julie and because she's the one that I saw stitching them. I wouldn't have found out about her um, if, if I hadn't seen yours. So thanks Julie. Right my previous finishes. I've got three previous finishes to show you today. The first one is this one. Now again when I saw this written down in my finishes list I was like what is that? I don't remember that one and it's just called I've just written down Catherine Archer and I know it must be this one because this is a bit of Tobias and um by Seraphim and it's stitched with Sulky and what it is is a lady sent me a card with a Bristol sampler on the back uh, sorry on the front and on the back it had charted a few of the motifs so I'm guessing it's the Catherine Archer Bristol sampler I don't know if that's available as a whole thing or whether it's just available as this um, few motifs on a little card and then I just mounted it onto a little old bud, butter, not butter, butter paddle, pa, butter paddle. <laughs> I've been like it all day today with the kids. I've been like, just arrange these words into a sentence for me. And uh, yeah, so, and just stitched onto there. And I was watching Made by Michelle McGraw, who's released another little video, which actually she filmed before she did her smalls exchange because it's her small that she was exchanging and she was talking about flat folds and she was saying that she doesn't feel that she's very good at, at flat fold finishes and I'm not either it's not my it's not my thing I'm good at so like Michelle I'm going to be trying to practice flat folds for next year I can never get them quite how I want them to um, and the tutorials always look like they should be really easy and they're not I just get in such a pickle with them so I'm really gonna have to try and make a few extra flat folds next year but it's this shaped one that I struggle with because my other freebie oh I'm sorry my other finish which is actually a freebie is a circular flat finish and I have absolutely no trouble with a circular flat finish because I can just 
gather it at the back sorry just gather it at the back and then pull it tight so this is Erin Yu by Pinker and Punkin Blogspot which always gives me trouble and I just stitched it on a piece of 36 count and I'm pretty sure it might be 32 count but I'm pretty sure that's Tobias as well I remember buying a piece of Tobias and just literally stitching loads and loads of smalls on it so there we go in fact I think HF Sampler that I showed you yesterday which I've put back now um, is also on Tobias and then I just finished it on the back doo -doo, with a little piece of coordinating thread and some matching beads and then I just did this kind of pin finish and it's dead easy because all you do is you find these nice pins and you poke them in between the two bits of card and I found that I really like to just sew my two boards together. I put a little bit of glue in the middle just to help out but I really like to do small stitches and sew them together. I find they stay together much, much better than if I use glue and try and stick them together because at some point they always ping open. So there we go. And my last finish is a Whilst Iris Naps finish and she released it for spring and I did look and see what it was called and I've, it's gone out of my head so I'll put it across the bottom what it's called and it's the one with the three bunnies on. Now I don't know quite what why that's looking a bit of a funny angle there there we go it's the one with the three bunnies on so all I did was I found myself a little metal watering can and I glued made a little almost like a flat fold but it's got a very very thin piece of card in the middle so that I could bend it and it would stay bent and put a little piece of felt on the back and made a very tiny little carrot this is actually one of the stitched carrots from the um, the design and then on the top I've just got a little um, little pin cushion and a few carrot pins which if I remember correctly these ones are from just another button company and the little rabbit there if it'll focus on the little rabbit is a Pantini Pantini pin and I also at the time made some little carrots as well so I just made them exactly like I would a strawberry but just made them really long and thin so these are made with like a felt, a wool. So I just seamed down the back, which I quite like. I didn't turn them inside out because it would be really hard to get the point on them if I turned them inside out with using this fabric. And then I just made a little fancy carrot top for each one. So they just sit together at Easter time with my little watering can and my Whilst Iris Naps rabbits on the side. So that's all I've got to show you today, apart from the advent calendars. So, number eight, this is a very heavy one, this one. So let's have a look and see what we've got. Ooh, pure, natural, vegan and effective, super hydrate day cream with an SPF of 15. So not a lot, but then we don't need a lot in Wales. So, a little sniff see if we can have a little sniff it doesn't smell too much actually which I quite like in a you know day cream because you don't want to be you know it's like you've got a, a cream that's really really scented you're like who's following me around all day especially if it's a new one who's that who's that really close to me and it's not it's the day cream so I will give that a whirl and I will let you know what I think I've been using that one of the first ones I got out from the kit actually the um, cleansing uh, wash balm stuff that I like in the morning and that's really nice I've, I've liked that number eight da -da and number eight we have got another thread Ooh. and this time we have got rose garden whoops finger caught in it then so we've got rose garden so it is actually a nice dark p 
pink just because my top's a bit more corally it's making it it's probably looking at making it look oh arrange the words into a sentence that's what I'm going to start doing I'm not going to do subtitles I'm going to do closed passages and then you just fit a word in every now and then so it's looking probably a little bit more orange than it actually is because of my top but it is a really nice dark dark pink there we are I will see you tomorrow. Stay classy, Stitchers.